mackerel. Spanish mackerel. Kuta. Crocodile. This very popular pelagic game fish species is known by many names across the globe. Predominantly a warm water species, the kuta can grow in excess of 100 pounds and a very popular target species when it comes to tournaments on the east coast of Africa and especially KwaZulu-Natal. The kuta is known to have quick and fast bursts of speed and sometimes hitting the prey at an enormous pace. Having razor sharp teeth can cut its prey in half, almost better than a sushi knife. Their teeth is also covered in a slime that prevents the blood from stalling and can be fatal to any angler not practicing caution. Lazi Ski Boat Club in Nintanzini has hosted an annual Kuta Classic for many years. A tournament that is well supported from both sponsors and anglers. The general region of Nintanzini on the Zululand section of KwaZulu Natal is very popular and famous for producing great catches when it comes to Kuta. This quaint and picturesque little town has a lot to offer on the deep sea fishing side, on the shore angling side, as well as the estuary side. Forming part of the Ezemvelu, this is a protected area with pristine sections of forest and game parks. Hi guys, I'm standing with Bernice van der Maiden. Now look at this beautiful, beautiful view here at the country club. Where Bernice agreed to meet us. Tell us a bit about Mtanzini, Bernice. Mtanzini is great. Um, we've got a very, very safe community here. Um, lots to do. If you're bored in Mtanzini, you're doing it wrong. We've got golfing, world class golf course, uh, tennis, uh, bowling, so many gorgeous. restaurants. Um, uh, we have got a huge birding community, huge cycling community. Um, it's just there is just water so sports much on water the sports, absolutely. It's just an amazing yeah, place and safe beaches. Well, too. we're lucky that the reserve is on the beach, yes. um, so that really yeah. helps with safety. Um, but also, you know, we we're not developed, so it's it's a beautiful, quiet beach. I think we we genuinely the gem of the north coast, and we love it that way. And we love this um, the Kuta Classic every year. It brings so many visitors to the village, and it brings a buzz and an excitement um, once a year, which is really great. Yeah. But this, thank you very much for your time. Thank and you. And guys, if you haven't been to Mtazini, you are missing out and that seems to be your problem. So make your way to Mtazini, come visit this really quaint, lovely, lovely destination. Offshore fishing is an enormous industry with a huge economical impact. Prize boats, vehicles and whatever goes with the sport is up on display. For the anglers, days before the time is where the preparation starts. But that last day or two when anglers start talking to each other, they scurl around to make sure they have the right bait, tackle, traces or whatever lures are talked about that will give them the chance to get the biggest fish. A lot is at stake when it comes to the prizes. Organizers and sponsors arrive early to set up their displays and exhibitions. Okay guys, exciting build up time for the Umlazi Ski Boat Kuta Classic 2023 and I'm standing with Paul Manning from Ritchie Farm Equipment that's been a very loyal sponsor for how long is that? Just over 20 years we've been involved in the competition, uh, specifically bringing tractors down, helping launch boats and bringing them back up and up again. And you know, the sad part is people and anglers and even the guys that's been here every year don't realise what it takes to get the tractors here and the mission to get them on the beach. We were talking earlier and you explained that. 
Absolutely, and I, I, I think that is a perception, but uh, it's a hell of a lot more than just jumping on a tractor and bombing it down to the beach. Um, it's a preparation of the tractor, we've got to get it really set up. I mean, as you can see, there's specific um, hitch points, etc., so that we can push the boats into the water and indeed pull them off. Um, and of course, there's, there's the transport, we've got to get them here, yeah, we've got to make sure that they're driven by the right trained people and then take them back and get them all cleaned up again so we can sell them. Sure. Yeah, no, but that's the thing with deep sea fishing. A lot of work, a lot of reward, and really a, a great competition. I see there's a lot of sponsors involved, yeah. and uh, uh, I believe you guys are going to be involved going forward as well, and it's uh, been a great competition yeah, every no, year. There's absolutely no doubt about that. I mean, we're, we're, we're part of it, and we will continue to be part of it. It's um, This is my home, of course, in Tanzini, so it makes it even easier. Yeah, uh, yes, yes. Um, and. Uh, the, the pressure of the organizers they make certain that i come back here every year but uh, we love it and and this is we kind of almost call it our competition we enjoy it every year well it's great having you here and the professionalism that these tractors bring to the ski boat pond is magnificent well done and you guys doing that thank you for adding that to the pond. thank you umla lazi ski boat club is almost engraved with a rich characteristic history of game fishing and some of the finest kuta fishing, a place where anglers and angling friends meet to share their stories of that big one that got away or that was boated. Some of the memories are all over the walls and if you listen carefully you can hear the real screaming. The afternoon before the event started, the sponsors, stages and some of the boats already came onto the club grounds. The Umla Lazi Kuta Classic is very well supported, as mentioned earlier, but also through the local businesses. Tufi Grobler, the local pharmacist and owner of the Kingfisher Square, is a very avid angler as well and spends a fair amount of time on the water doing what he loves so much. He's also one of the organizers of this prestigious tournament. Okay, now that's one of the many, many challenges when doing deep sea fishing and launching through estuary. Um, some of these trees that came down with a flood. Now this is low tide, as the tide's going out, it's almost low. And tomorrow morning when the boat's launched, it will be high tide. But that stump will be under the water, that whole tree disappears under the water. So they, they're gonna come later with a boat we might go with, just to mark it with boys. And, and uh, to, so that the guys can actually see where it's, where it's situated in the, in the mouth. Now behind me, the mouth puts in a, a, in a fork, a uh, channel going out that side and then a channel going along this side going out and that's how they launch but when you look at it at a low tide this is intimidating and slightly scary quite a challenge but these guys have most of them have done this launch through this estuary many many times and uh, looking forward to tomorrow what we're going to see after assessing the posable threat, the organizers made a decision to rather extract this tree instead of marking it with a buoy, thus making it safer for everyone to launch through the estuary. A tree like that can have a detrimental effect on someone's outboard motors, and in turn, the whole tournament. Ntanzini hosts some of the most picturesque beaches on the Zululand coastline. Okay, I'm standing here with Nico Akkovic that operates uh, the ski boat club launching side of things here on the beach. Um, quite a responsibility choosing the areas I would assume and the spots for the day. See this morning launched about 200 meters down that road. And you'll see that the bank now is very steep. Now to put these big boats up with a little track that's unplayable. So what we do is we move down the beach and look for a flat area of where we're working in now. It also enables the skippers to slide when they come out. So they can clear the, 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 the water. The danger is is water getting in the back of the boat. Yes, and the boat will suck it. So it's a big problem and that's why you hear me shouting all the time because I need the people to be quick. 
yes. yes. So you've got to get the boats hooked and up. And the, the, the formation here yeah, needs to be a bank, fairly shallow but not too shallow for them to come over on the foamies. It mustn't dump. Yeah, right. yeah, that helps. But just behind the saw where it's falling now is a gully. Yes. So they've got a lot of water. Yeah. And the, and the water coming off the bank now sucks up and gives them water to come in on top of it. Because otherwise you fall there and then yeah, people don't understand the responsibility in our shore beach management best to be yeah. when it comes to this and your forecast for tomorrow with with the competition well, the 50 boats come up now it'll um, be choppy <laughs> yeah but it, it'll be more feasible in the southwest tomorrow. yeah and i expect the guys will be out till at least then so. okay because yeah. there's a lot of money at play. Opening and registration. Anticipation's high and so are the stakes. With everyone and everything ready and in place to target those big kuta, it only comes down to the fish and the weather to play along. Participants are meeting up, sharing a drink and some stories and possibly some strategies and will meet again on the water tomorrow. All participants are added on a WhatsApp group to share any vital information when it comes to weather and conditions. Final arrangements, rules and procedures are shared. The media team were housed at the spectacular Charlotte's Bed and Breakfast, situated in Mtanzini, with spectacular views, providing first-class accommodation. The next morning was green for go. Not the greatest conditions, but good enough to get on the water. With more than 50 boats launching, and the hopes were high to see some crocs boated. On a spring tide, there is only a five hour window over the high tide where boats can launch through the estuary and lined up nicely for this tournament as high tide was at six. On the first morning, there was only one jet ski that launched. Launching is allowed from first light when beach management gives a go. There needs to be enough light to allow for a safe launch. Good morning everybody. I'm standing here in Tanzini with uh, Truman Butelezi that's in charge of the Isimvelu Park and the beach is here. That's correct, that's correct. Uh, good morning, it's a lovely morning. Yes, they, I'm in charge of this area. This is a marine protected area. It starts from Port Danport, which is four kilometers uh, north of where we're standing, yes. all the way to Sateni nearby Tilly Manor. That's where, sure. that's where it ends. But we, we're doing the competition here, the competitive Kuda Classic. Yes. It's here at Mtunzini Beach. Yeah. And in your opinion, see it's a bit rough this morning? Wow, yeah, we saw some that little was, jumps. Yeah, it was uh, too many horses out there, so yeah. it's too many rough. It's too rough, yes. 
Well, Tripp, it's nice seeing you on the beach and nice seeing you again. I haven't seen you in, in years, no? Yes, you're but welcome. Uh, welcome. I'm happy also to see you after a long time. Thanks, Tripp. Yeah. Alright, thank you so much. Thanks for doing a great job yeah. here. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Right. This part of the tournament is essential as this is where things can go wrong. It is important for all participants to take their time and make sure they have a safe launch, especially from the estuary and the beach. Beach management plays an important role here too, to advise the participants on the conditions and any potential obstructions. After getting permission from beach control to launch, you get ticked off the list as well as when you return. And this includes all three allocated areas. Boats launching from Richards Bay will get called in by the officials based in Richards Bay. This way, they can monitor which boats have returned and which haven't. Some of the participants slept in a bit and decided to launch a bit later. This could be due to conditions or to a really great opening evening. All participants launching through the estuary did this a few kilometers up the river from the designated launch pad in the Ismvelo Park. Their vehicles and trailers will be moved to the beach upon return. Beach launches are done by means of a tractor and a push pull to minimize any potential risks or accidents. Frequent radio reports came in every now and again about fish, about the conditions or just general feedback. Conditions proved to be challenging and definitely wasn't a very comfortable day out. Most of the boats stayed out though to try and get that prize fish. Reports of many fish that were lost came in quickly and some success stories but all is only revealed at the wane. There are several prizes available, not just for Kuta, but for several game fish species, allowing the anglers to target more than just Kuta. Okay guys, this is the first boat with uh, some fish in the boat named Sharka and Kaylee van Kovenwerfen with a very, very nice scooter. Those two about in the region of about 15 kilos. Weighing starts a bit later, but uh, first boat in the bay, the wind picked up badly there. Well done, very nice fish, Thank Kaylee. You.
With the conditions deteriorating, some of the boats started returning, especially those who already had some catches. Wonderado, what? Wonderado. And wet. Very wet. With beach control, directing the boats where to beach by using the red flags, it keeps the beaching very well controlled. Especially when it's close to weighing cutoff, several boats can return in a short period of time. Coordinating this process can become tricky. It's rough though. <laughs> With the boats starting to come in quickly now, it was evident that not a lot of fish were caught. Very few kuta at that, and the tournament was still very much open. When arriving on the beach, the beach management marks every catch with a red tag on the tail that has a unique number. This needs to correspond at weigh-in and eliminate any possible discrepancies. At the same time, Ezem Velo officials also records the catches and check every boat for the required permits and fishing licenses. I'm standing with Harvey Portside, the chairman of Umlazi Fishing Club and hosting the comp and it's growing with strength by strength by strength every year from what I've heard and seen. And how was that out there today, Paul? Well, all the comps I fished, this one was the heaviest one yet, eh? Um, I think we check all the apps, we watch the predictions, and I think in the first in a long time they were actually right. At certain stages, they did predict about a two meter swell, but I can tell you there was about two and a half to four meter swells at sections coming through at Edwards Cuddies today. Now I heard a lot of folks saying it was wet, wet, wet. And fishing wise, I see you you guys were yep. some of the lucky ones to get some kuta. We were fortunate eh? with our first bait, bait we put out, um, my wife got a, a nice kuta. So and that was the only bite we got for the day. So that was seven o'clock. Kuta wise, yeah. Kuta wise, yeah. Uh, they got some other fish as well. Yeah. Trying to, to fish for live, which we got some, some other stuff as well. But yeah, uh, seven o'clock the kuta was on board and that was um, the last kuta for the day. Well done. Thank you so much. One of the highlights of these tournaments is everyone gathering at the waste station to see which catches come in. Everything is in place, well organized to receive the boats and weigh the fish. The boat fanatic brought in some really good catches with a kuta that looked very promising and could possibly be the biggest one of the day so far. Who have caught the biggest kuta? That everybody wants to know. But in this tournament especially, there's a lot of prizes for all kinds of game fish species. Almost nobody walks away empty handed. And it was Wayne Ritchie fishing on Fnatic with skipper Krista Bornman that weighed in the leading fish of 17 kilos. Susan Briet also weighed in a very nice kuta on skipper Harvey Portgitter's boat. Umlalazi Skipper's Club is well equipped with cleaning tables to clean your catch immediately and ice from the bar to keep it fresh. There are also several boat garages that anglers could purchase or rent to store their boat and tackle. The club also boasts a wash bay to clean your boat before taking it away. And 
some fresh sashimi on the menu. These tournaments and clubs is where friendships grow, sharing common interests and great stories, knowledge and techniques with fellow angling friends. It is like one big family looking out for each other. More catches started coming in and at any moment a bigger kuta can be weighed. And as more catches came in, it started looking possible that the 17 kilo from Boat Fanatic could be the leading fish of the day. Where young and old get involved and show off their catches for the day, holding their breath to have that fish that will take the lead or rank quite high. With the first prize being 80,000 Rand in cash, as well as some other prizes, it is not just playing around. And as it goes with most fishing trips, some anglers literally get hooked. But with the help of a local vet, this problem was resolved quickly. More and more catches came in, but the 17 kilo fish from Fnatic was still safe. Guesses, opinions and stories starts flying. More fish came in and got weighed. Will there be a bigger one? It isn't over until the fat lady sings. Or shall we say, the fat kutta is weighed. And then it happened. Donovan, who fished on Busy Liz, came in with a fish of 19 kilos, the new leader for the day. And that's how quick it can happen. After a tough day's fishing and several fish being lost, of course a lot of them that would have been by far the biggest for the day, the anglers went for a well-deserved rest to be up early in the morning where they'll receive the report from the beach management if the sea is fishable. Some really good Natal snook or queen mackerel catches also made their appearance in excess of 8 kilograms. Conditions for the next day started looking bleak as the reports came in. It was clear that not all participants will be launching on the last day due to the weather conditions. Even with the prizes this high, safety still comes first. With the conditions already worse than the previous day, only 11 boats took on the challenge, as a big southwesterly was predicted to come in at round about 11 o'clock, thus giving them a small window to potentially boat that winning fish. 
And as it sometimes happened with the weather predictions, that big southwest arrived almost three and a half hours early. The beach management is in touch with clubs and anglers further down the coastline and received reports that the southwest has already hit Belito. Several boats decided not to launch when this news arrived. So with only 11 boats out, the bigger catches of the previous day had a very good chance to take the top prizes. With 11 boats out, now the wait begins. Even Kies came out to experience the anticipation. With beach management and several supporters waiting, it was all about the first boats to start coming in. Will one of these boats have that catch that can take the lead? And when Jürgen Swart from Metanoia beached and showed his catch, it looked very possible that they might just be a new leader. Only the scales would tell. One by one, the boats that braved the last day's conditions came in with only a few of them having some catches. General consensus confirmed that the conditions were extremely challenging, making the fishing uncomfortable. came in on the second day and it was time to see if we have a new leader. And then it goes. Lucky Yenuki. How many? Jürgen Swart with a cooter of 20.6 kilograms is now lying in first place. Jürgen also operates the charter at Mtanzini. Right guys now so far the leading fish and most impressive fish by Jürgen Swart, Cycad Coast Charters. Been operating almost a year in Mtanzini but been fishing here a very very long time. Now it started off a horrible day weather wise. How was it out there? Well, we went out through the mouth. It was uh, it was okay. The mouth uh, launch. We had to uh, hold back a bit in the mouth and uh, wait for a break to come. But um, then it started off quite flat, and I thought, well, we are lucky for for today. And then I was halfway on my towards my spot, and the, the west buster just came through and like hit us, and it wasn't so nice after that. <laughs> Up until now, it was uh, it was terrible today out there. Eh? And yeah. where did you get that fish? Where was we it? got that fish there at Caddy's. Okay. Uh, it's a well-known spot here in Mtanzini and uh, a lot of guys go. There was about three or four boats out there and uh, yeah, we got lucky and put a couple of baits out, dropped a couple of fish, but we managed to get a, uh, get the one to hold on to the hooks, you know. Yeah, so it, 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 was, it was a good day. We got a nice, nice kingy for my one friend that I fished with, like so I he was quite that. happy. Yeah, and then uh, a good cruiser. If they want to know depth, uh, bait, all of that, you have to join him on a chart. He'll show you everything. <laughs> but uh, we're not sharing that today. What we yeah. are sharing as well is Max, the brave little uh, Max. Oh, uh, Mackie. Mackie. Yeah. Mackie. Mackie's his name, yeah. Okay, he had a bit of an ordeal today. Yeah, he got a bloody well. Uh, he's fished with me about 20 times or so, and he loves going out on the boat. He, he cannot, if he sees me, he knows the evening before if I'm going to fish or not. And then what he does is he um, he just can't wait to get on the boat. So he's fished with me 20 plus times and he loves it. But today for the first time he got a, a, a hook. Just here, <laughs> so the, just here in the top lip. So I had to sort that out uh, with a lot of screaming and that with the rough seas. Yeah. 
But yeah, no, he's a he's a good dog, eh? Um, and yeah, I always go with him. Always, he brings me luck. We well, can see it took it out of him the, the rough water today. No? Yeah, so he looks yeah. tired. No, he's tired today. He's gonna go and sleep in the bucky now. More and more catches came in by the very devoted anglers who took on the challenge of the rough weather. And as it goes, no one could predict the weather. Time to start the prize giving. The clouds joined in song. With a tropical rainstorm, only Zululand can do justice. Welcome to the 2023 Umla Kuta Classic wrap up. Prize giving. Prize giving. And hopefully some of you guys can go home with some nice prizes. This provided its own challenges, but the prize giving was done and almost everybody walked away with a prize. As mentioned earlier, this tournament is very well supported, especially when it comes to prizes. For the youngsters, lucky draws for many different game fish species, and then of course, the top 20 kuta catches. competition we do allow three prizes for some other species that comes out third place now you're quiet Sarah van Rensburg with a snook of 7.5 kilos on boat Kiru well done boys <laughs> Took of 8 kilos on the boat, that's it. Hannes Furi. First prize on other species on the boat. Chaka, Eastern Little Tuna, Heinrich, 8.3 kilos. In the 21st place, with a kuta of 5.5 kilos on the boat Nanook. Reniri Hordan Senior. <laughs> then in 20th place, Kuta of 7.3 kilos. On the boat Firefly F Buta. Kuta of 7.8 kilos in 19th position. Liam Commons on Bucktail. Kuta of 8.2 kilos, Arnold Briant on boat, Onset 8.4 kilos, Zach Goodman on the boat, Metanoia. Kuta of 9 kilos on the boat, Not Guilty, Lucas Landman. Kuta of 9.7 kilos, Marcel Jones, Onset on the boat, No Fun. Kuta of 10.4 kilos, Byron Lottery. Kuta of 11.1 kilos, Zander Feldman. In 12th position, Kuta 11.7 kilos on the boat Hillbilly, our own Mr. Kuta himself, Greg Wright, aka Joshua Dorp. Half point nine kilos on my boat, Susan Breed. Position number 10, boat No Fine, a Kuta of 12.2 kilos. Louis Gunter. You listen to the weights, you can hear how close the next four or five are. Position number seven. 
on the boat Mouse, Kuta 14.3 kilos, Neil Davidson. Then in position number five, Kuta 14.8 kilos, Dani on Busy Liz, the Kuta of 16 kilos, the boat no fine, Craig Gunter, third position. But a Kuta of 17 kilos, Wayne Ritchie on the boat fanatic. In second position, with a kuta of 19 kilos, and you'll see the check size now as well, on busy list, Donovan. Then, the official winner of the Umralazi Futa Classic 2023, Stuck Out the Hours, Bad Sea, on Metanoia, Kuta of 20.6 kilos, Jürgen Swart. Jürgen, what work is this, Yeah, very long years since I've been safe. With the conclusion of a very successful Kuta Classic, everybody returned more than just satisfied. Well done to Umlulazi Ski Boat Club, a prestigious and noteworthy tournament. To all the organizers, club members, sponsors and beach management, this is all made possible by having all of them together. Some days you don't. That's just how it works, eh? Um, to my partner here, it's the first time I met him. I had uh, two or three people that were supposed to fish with me, and Zach uh, never met him. First time, he was a hard worker, and without him, I wouldn't be able to do this. And I just want to thank you for that. Thank you, my boy. Well done, yeah. Zach. A big thank you and appreciation goes out to the sponsors who makes these tournaments possible. Most of them getting involved themselves. This was only made possible with everyone's joint efforts. Ladies and gentlemen, with this, the party is only starting, but the Umlalasi Ski Boat Club Kuta Classic 2023 is officially closed. My work here is done. Our committee is tired, they put in effort, effortless hours. Thank you once again. And those who travel homes, please travel safe. See you next year.